can do a better burnout if you want. Okay. Tried to do some more uh, burnout stuff for uh, video and thumbnail and stuff and uh, absolutely destroyed my diff. Uh, there's uh, pieces of diff on the ground underneath of the diff. So that's something else that we can look forward to in future videos. New diff coming right up. Hi guys, welcome to the Gears and Gasoline Garage and we are here with the RX-7. The last time that you saw this car, I was uh, absolutely grenading the differential trying to do some smoky burnouts and, and uh, donuts and whatnot. So uh, apparently it's pretty easy to do on RX-7s. As a matter of fact, this was the second differential that had been in the car because the previous owner, right before he sold it to me, had done the exact same thing and broken the original diff open doing burnouts. So we are going to upgrade that so that we don't uh, keep having the same issues. This is my buddy, Mark. Uh, hey. Mark is a much better mechanic than I am, uh, so he is very graciously going to be helping me uh, do some of the heavy lifting to pull this differential out of the car. Oh, you're going to do all the heavy lift? Okay. I'm just going to watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll supervise. Mark is going to supervise. Oh. Oh my, dude, it goes, it goes all the way up to the top. It doesn't come around to this side. Yeah. Yeah, it's like mostly, it's like this whole section is just literally popped off. I think you did this on purpose so you can spend more time with me. <laughs> Do you think there's even any point in draining this diff? No. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Dry as a bone. Dry as a bone. If you uh, pull your magnetic drain plug out and it's got chunks on it, that's bad. Everything's easier with a buddy. That thing right now is just caught on it. Okay, yeah, it's at its lowest point. It's resting on there. You work it back just a hair. Now see, Mark, when you come over and I tell you something's gonna be an easy job, I mean, it's gonna be an easy job. Yeah, we started at nine and got done by what, yeah. 9.30. This is probably the easiest differential I've ever pulled. And you know, this system that Mazda employed here. Oh, it's perfection. It's beautiful. Makes things I, easier. I don't know why all manufacturers don't uh, put that on there. I know, because you can see how well it, it absorbs any shock that goes to the diff. And, right. Yeah. Um, so you can see the crack kind of went in a little cross pattern here and uh, cracked down all the way around here around where the axle seal is, but this crack was the big one. It goes down all the way down across the rear cover and then up around the side, literally all the way around the casing, over the top, and then we're back on the rear cover. That is how you destroy a differential. Holy cow. With the busted differential removed from the car, it was time to get a new one built. So I took all the parts that I accrued to my buddies at TRE in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Hi, I'm Aaron here at TRE, and we're gonna hear dissect Ben's rear diff from his RX-7 that he kinda broke. Nice. 
Ooh. Mm. It's a really thin cover. Ooh, exploded the, uh, one of the gears right out of it. It's really good. <laughs> I'm surprised it didn't take any teeth off the uh, ring and pinion, though. You said the tires are all warm and everything. There's a lot of grip happening there. Instead of trying to break them loose, it's trying to launch the car. It's loading up. It's trying to push anyways. Being where the ring gear is in the housing, it's loading up the one side more than the other anyways. And it's just flat out flexing it, and then you're cracking and breaking. It's trying to push this right out of the car. You just overloaded what it's ever designed to handle. I've seen a couple of aluminum ones do this before. It's usually like a like an Evo, uh, like Evo 10 AYC will do that, but it's an aluminum housing. It's not as common to see a cast, but it's not like it's got that much meat on it either. Luckily, we weren't going to be using what Mazda had given us back in 1993, but instead we'd be upgrading. In addition to a fresh diff casing and all new bearings and seals, I ordered an ATS Super Silent Metal Limited Slip Differential. These are the friction discs. And these right here, man, I'm bleeding. A little bit of blood's always good for the differential. All the power is being transmitted off of that ring gear onto this differential housing. This differential housing is the next place that the power is going through. The next place before it gets out to the wheels is it's got to go through the side sheaves right here, okay? But there it is. Now when this guy's turning, the side sheaves turning. The cross shaft floats between the two side sheaves. Let's just take the gear set out of it for a second. Now that cross shaft's gonna sit inside of there. It's the next thing that's turning. But because of the ramp, the ramp of the, of the side sheave, if you wanna zoom in here, you can see this ramp action right here. See that? So when this guy is, when this guy is being turned inside of this diff, these guys are on this, these, these spider gears are on this cross shaft, the side gears are, are meshed into those side gears or the spider gears going to the axles. All this stuff doesn't want to turn. What it's going to do is it's going to cause this cross shaft to get forced because it's the, it's the next place that the power has to get transmitted through on these gears. It's going to want to force these side sheaves to spread apart. And when they spread apart, they squeeze on the clutch pack. You can see this guy raise up when I do that. And that right there is what's actually clamping down. But for the most part, these differentials, the more you kick this thing's ass, the more this thing's gonna mash down on those friction discs, the more that that thing is gonna, you know, put both wheels, lock up both wheels and give you what you guys want, which is um, power to both rear tires. John is the quintessential mad scientist. You can ask him one question and it will kick off a five minute answer as John tries to expel all the information he's got bouncing around in his brain, like my RX-7 trying to find traction on asphalt. One of the benefits of a uh, active yaw control differential for production purposes these are gonna be is the root radius on the gear teeth. He really is like a professor and every time I'm at the shop, it's like a crash course in automotive mechanics, machining, metallurgy, and tribology, you name it and John has probably read a few books on it. He's so verbose, it's difficult to edit and impossible to fit into a short video for YouTube. But if you ever get the chance to meet him, let him talk. Going to a smooth friction disc up against um, the, the uh, spiral grooved or embossed one, that would reduce chatter. When you have these grooves going past one another like that, they tend to make vibration. They, they can make some noise. You can get that noise right there, but at low speed, that is a chatter or a grumble from the, uh, from the rear differential that people hear. So this right here, I would imagine this differential would be more silent because of these discs right here. Perhaps the biggest change I was making was this, an RX-8 differential with a 4.44 final drive. Swapping this ring and pinion into the new diff 
would replace the standard RX-7 for 10 final drive, resulting in slightly shorter gears, which would help make the car feel a little less lazy with my big single turbo. This actually looks pretty nice. So this is the ring gear, this is the pinion. Now the pinion bolts, goes like this, and the dry shaft bolts here, turns this, and then this guy gets turned by the pinion, which the axles are in, to the tires. So, drive shaft, like that. We're gonna improve the strength and uh, crack resistance, increase fatigue resistance, and hopefully make this differential last longer. We've seen very impressive results in shop painting uh, when we build transmissions. So this is a Magnaflex machine. The purpose of this is to look for cracks that you can't see visually with your eyes. This is an Evo front differential. They are very common for cracking. You launch the car a couple times, it's, you can actually see in here where there's a heat treat line. They crack right on that line. So what we're gonna do is put it in here, magnetize the part. So now we magnetize it. If there's a crack, that will create a pull point. This uh, solution we have will uh, be going in there and you'll see the cracks. That's a real good crack right there. If you notice, that crack, looking at it, that's what it'll do. It'll crack and then break off. And that would be the next thing we're gonna do on yours. Because what would the point of putting this together if it's cracked? It's just gonna crack and break later on. And I always check splines up here too, because on Evo, as they crack. They'll twist off right there. Those are fine. I don't see any cracks up high. And that's usually, the pinion is usually more often what you're gonna see crack. Seeming it has, in this case, four times it's gotta rotate for one time with this guy. It just gets way more abuse, it's worn more. And this looks fine too. So everything's good. So after the part's all been Magnaflex and checked, you wanna demagnetize it. And the way to do that is you just run it through. All right, so on this, I'm gonna corner around the gears. You don't want to make contact out here, which it will do on this guy, so we just knock this off. So you don't want all that leverage point out there. So here on this is the detail bench. We're trying to get, in this case, rid of any of the uh, stress risers around the edges there. You don't want anything sharp. Any sharp edges is a place for initiation point of a uh, crack. So we're just trying to get rid of all that stuff. Plus, we're gonna do some tip relief because unlike, for instance, this ring gear, we can see on the coast side, it's really digging into the bottom of the tooth here. We'll do some rounding and some modifying in the uh, buffing wheel and everything before we shot paint to help with that. If John is the mad scientist, Aaron is the magician. He's the one who built my Evo and upgraded transmission at the drop of a hat, and he did such an incredible job that I literally drove 11 hours to Michigan to film him build my diff, and I could watch him detail gears for hours. It's gonna be assembling the limited slip back together after everything we did. We took it all apart to shop in the spider gears, which is the only thing that's really prone to this to be failing in this differential is usually these guys here. So detail the chopping it to give it the best fighting chance it can have. How this came right now is inside that splines to the axles. Inside, outside, inside, outside, inside, inside, four outside. There's many different ways to tune a limited slip. This is gonna be the best way for soft, it's not race car. 
honestly, like on a normal person, you would just pull out this carrier out of the differential, unbolt the ring gear, and put it in, and then you would start to have to check for your pattern and your backlash and, and make those adjustments according. Usually it's fairly close from like just, they do a pretty good job where you can kind of throw it in. To the average person, you could do this in a weekend in your garage. Right now we are checking backlash. Backlash is the amount of space in between the pinion teeth and the ring gear teeth. You need this for uh, oiling and everything. Oil needs some room to get in there. And uh, if you go too tight, it won't get enough oil in it. It will burn up because it's gear on gear contact. And if you go too loose, you'll also have a problem with it whining. It'll just be loud. Backlash on this particular one has these shims there's one here on the side of the carrier and there's one here so in this case i had to bring it down so then i had to take some material get a thinner shim on this side and then add over here to keep preload right now i have it at five thou and that for this differential which is shocking is on the high side technically but i like five thou on this it's four and a half to five and there's a potential it might open up about a half thou after everything wears in and it'll be fine this is gear marking paint this will show you the contact pattern that's being created. It'll also tell you if the pinion's too low compared to this or too, too high. There, now we really can see the pattern. All right, so looking at this pattern here, uh, we have a lot more contact towards the toe than we do the heel, which is what we want. Because again, when this car launches, does this load, when it loads the whole thing up and everything, it's going to come out this way. Um, I like where it's sitting on the thing. It's really good, it's where I want them. Uh, a yeah, little kind of weird pattern in the middle there when it's ghosting out, but once it's in the car, I'll be fine. I wonder if we can see it on this side. Got a real nice contact in the middle here. It's nice and fat. It goes to side to side on the coast. The thing is, the coast never really sees the load. It's just engine braking. So I don't really care about the coast as much. If we were gonna go road course, I'd still rock it like this. All right, so we are back from Michigan uh, at long last, uh, back with the RX-7, back in Virginia, and of course, we have our nice, fresh diff, uh, new differential casing, new rear cover, obviously. Uh, we have the LSD from ATS, the ATS Super Silent, which will be really nice for the street. And then, of course, probably the biggest change, we've got the 4.44 uh, ring gear and pinion from an RX-8. Uh, in order to make sure I'm doing everything I can to try and mitigate any more crack differentials, a uh, rear diff girdle for an FD, uh, cradle, brace, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but effectively what this does is you bolt it onto the differential. That will, in theory, help to support the casing, uh, give it uh, more rigidity against shock load and stuff like that, which is what cracked it the first time. Um, you know, I mean, if I really want to destroy this diff again, you know, it's probably not too difficult. This probably will not be doing, you know, working any miracles, but it's something, you know, uh, so I just need to be a little bit smarter about how I try and tune. I 
made a mistake and this girdle has to go on after the diff is already installed. So I have to pop the girdle off really quick. So Luke just reminded me of something kind of funny. Uh, today is December 1st, 2021. And on December 1st, 2020, we were in Montana, also working on the R7 because <laughs> it had just broken down. Some things never change. Diff is filled with fluid, axles are in. Uh, we're ready to go and see if she drives around. We're ready to go, hopefully just break in the diff. Putting brake in miles on it. I gotta check and see if it's leaking anything when we get back to the shop. But, you know, driving the RX-7 again. So the diff clunks like crazy right now. It feels like a typical race spec clutch type LSD. Um, you know, super silent. I don't know how accurate that is. It's getting me a lot of unwanted attention at Chick-fil-A. Well guys, it has been one heck of a week. On Monday, I was literally in Kalamazoo, Michigan, getting this rear differential built. By Wednesday, I was back in town installing it. I didn't know if it was gonna work or not. Thursday, still working on it, finally got it in, started driving it, and now it's Friday. I've put about 50 or 60 miles on it, and you know, you guys are gonna be watching this video literally tomorrow. Pretty rare that that happens, that you know, something is literally filmed in such a tight time frame to it being released, but that's the kind of schedule we're on. Uh, the diff is making less and less noise the more I drive it, which is great, that's nice. It is getting to be more super silent. Um, but I'm just happy to have the car running again. And really my main focus is just having a car that I'm not afraid to drive how I want to drive it. And uh, you know, after doing those, those, those burnouts, those donuts last time that ultimately broke the diff, I feel kind of scared about it. As a matter of fact, my oil puddle from the differential is on the ground right there. This is sort of the, the grave site of my previous uh, differential. Uh, but I don't want to be worried about stuff like that. Um, you know, I don't want to kind of live in fear of breaking something. And I think the best way to not live in fear is to just do it. on my time attack tires and they're too freaking sticky. I need some crappy like 500 treadwear tires or something. I can't get it to break loose. <laughs> That's a wrap. That's a wrap. Not my finest work. A uh, couple of factors, I think. Diff is really good. Uh, shorter final drive means that I'm getting less wheel speed in first gear. Uh, so that makes everything a little bit, uh, there's less inertia, there's less wheel speed, there's less smoke, and uh, it doesn't want to do 
uh, it, it wants to hook up. And then also I have very sticky tires. Uh, but enough excuses, uh, it's not broken. I'm thrilled, I'm ecstatic and I'm not scared anymore of uh, breaking the diff. So that's great, I'm very happy. Thank you for watching. I'm gonna go and take a nap for a week. doing break-in miles, <laughs> uh, getting chicken sandwiches. I love chicken sandwiches. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> Luke's my date. <laughs> Luke's my date. Yes, sir!